Good evening, friends, and a hearty welcome to you for this online recollection talk organized by Prerana Ignatian Spirituality Center, Bengaluru. We are in the Lenten season. The season of Lent invites us to have a deeper union and communion with the person of suffering Christ. Today, Father James Darby will explain to us the Abba experience of Jesus in order to understand and appreciate the Lenten season in a more meaningful way. Therefore, let's begin this recollection talk with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, our loving Father, we ask you to bless each one of us. In a special way, we ask you to bless Father James Darby, today's recollection preacher. Bless him so that he may enlighten and inspire us on the theme, the Abba experience, awareness of the Abba experience of Jesus. This talk may help us to live the Lenten season in a more fruitful way. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, good evening to everyone. I have the privilege of introducing to you Father James Darby, today's recollection preacher. Father James Darby belongs to Gujarat Jes Jesuit province. Presently, he is stationed at Gurjarwani, Ahmedabad. He is assisting at the communication center there. Father James primarily is a scripture scholar. He has done his studies in Biblicum. Later on, he did his doctorate at Santa Clara University, USA. He has been a scripture teacher as well as professor since 1995. He has taught at Vidya Jnanadeep Pune and Ranchi, Karnataka, Mumbai, even Delhi at various such uh, theolo theology faculties. Today, Indeed, we are privileged to have Father James with us, who, before joining the society, finished his master's in daily technology, and he was working as a, yeah, as a technical officer at Amul India. So, we are so happy to have you, Father James, with us to preach today's recollection on behalf of all the viewers here on the Zoom platform. I, on behalf of them, extend a hearty welcome to you and over to you, Father James. So I thank you, Father Prashant, for the invitation and the opportunity. And I thank you, my fathers, my brothers, my sisters, for being together. Let us journey for next 40, 45 minutes in this recollection talk of uh, Lenten season 2022. I will base myself on the Gospel of Mark because the biblical scholars agree that Gospel of Mark was the first Gospel to be written. Of course, the first New Testament writings are the letters of Paul and very, very close from the time of resurrection to the writing of the letters by Paul. They could have been ideal. But Paul is not interested in historical Jesus. 
he was more interested in presenting that son of God who is our redemption, who saved us, liberated us from sins. And therefore, to imitate someone, it is good to go to the gospel. And then I pick up the first gospel, and the first gospel, Mark, has the first experience of Jesus that becomes our sharing today. Mark chapter 1 verse 1 is the title. I just read the title, the beginning of the gospel. I should have read the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. After this, verses 2 to 8 is about John the Baptist. Because that is the person who is going to be instrumental in introducing this person, Jesus, to the world. And the very first experience of Jesus mentioned by Mark in his gospel is the baptism. And there are only just two verses, and that will be the expression of the experience of Jesus of last 30 years. Prior to that, Jesus was God eternal, one of the Holy Trinity, but became human fully, exactly like you and me, and lived for 30 years. And at the end of the 30 years, according to Luke chapter 3, verse 23, Jesus was about 30 years, Luke 3, 23. Jesus comes to John the Baptist. This experience is longer. Expression is very short. So I read the expression. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Something is happening. Our experience and the expression is in verse 10. That is our key verse. Verse 10, 1, 10. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he, Jesus, saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on Jesus. Verse 11, and a voice came from heaven. So verse 11 is devoted to the Father who is not seen. No form is given to the Father, just voice. You are my son, the beloved with you. I am well pleased. So here is the first darshan of Trinity. Jesus receiving the Holy Spirit and listening to the voice of the Father. This is Abba experience. We will spend some time. Jesus is grown up in a milieu where they are believers in God, the Israelites, the village Nazareth, when he was born and grew up, 
that time full of only Israelites. And they all believed in the existence of this God and the benevolence of this God and the demands of God because there was a covenant relationship between this God. But this God was boss, owner, big company holder. How can we say, see the way the God was addressed? Adonai Elohenu, Melech Leolam, God, Lord our God, King of the universe. And that was the experience of everyone. Some took him as taskmaster. I'm saying him because here God could be he, she, whatever. Jesus is he. But just not to confuse, I'm just using one. I should, I could say, but let us take the usual pronoun use. So God is now experienced by him as father. Now, how shall we decipher, how shall we understand this experience is we have to see what happens now next three years. Next three years, what happens? This experience for first 30 years is expressed in these two, three verses at the Jordan River on the occasion of receiving the baptism like an ordinary Israelite. And now this experience, how it is demonstrated, exhibited, manifested, revealed as the days go by. And that is what we all call the public life of Jesus. So now we come to the public life of Jesus, where this experience which Jesus had, which was surely the result of first 30 years, expressed. Now, again, he has the concrete experience where the spirit is coming and father is saying, you are my beloved son. Now, father-son relationship, how that is going to be unfolded, that is what we will now pay attention. So, in the public life of Jesus, which is just 30 years, because we have the fixed date of his death, because those who were responsible to condemn him, to execute the condemnation, all those were historical figures, and everything was written down. So it's just three years of public life. And in these three years, Jesus does four items. One item is called miracle stories. Another item is some concrete acts. Another item is called preaching. And another item is called teaching. All these are the performances. But just to understand this person, Jesus, in his public life, who is son of God and, of course, son of Mary, human like us, he performs one miracles, four types of miracles, healing miracle. For example, a leper comes to him. If you choose, I would be clean. You can make me clean. Mark 1, 40 to 42. And immediately he is cleansed. Healing miracle. There is another type of miracle which is called exorcism. Again, if we remain in Mark, by the time we reach in chapter 1, verse 21, we are in the synagogue of Capernaum, and there a young man 
is possessed and Jesus is exercising him. That's the second. Third type is resuscitation. And in resuscitation, we still remain in Mark. In chapter 5, Jairus, the synagogue leader, will come, but from which village? Not told. But his daughter, 12 years of age, is on the verge of dying. And by the time Jesus reaches, she is dead. And there is the resuscitation. The fourth and final is on nature. We still remain in Mark's gospel. And by the, by the time we read chapter 6, we have the multiplication of loaves. So there are four types of miracle stories. Then Jesus has some acts. Let us go out for the acts. So in what I'm very much touched is the woman who was accused of adultery, but condemned by the court of the village, that she is prune adulteress. That is the act of Jesus, where he just saves that woman. There are many acts, I'm just giving an example, or going in Luke's Gospel 19 to Jai, uh, the tax collector, Zacchaeus. This is an act of Jesus. Teaching of Jesus is when he is pre he's addressing a larger audience and the lesson imparted has not to be implemented immediately into life. That is called preaching. We are going to see that. And teaching is when it's a small audience, one person or 12 of them, or a small group. And there Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. That has to be implemented the moment you hear, the moment I hear. That is a teaching. Preaching, you have to wait because the situation will not be conducive that we are going to see now. Okay, out of this vast three years public life, this experience of Jesus, God is my father and therefore you become my brother, you become my sister because if God is my father and if I have become human being exactly like you, then the same God is your father. And therefore, if he, God is your father, then you are my brother. You are my sister. And with this, he is going into the public life. And in this public life, what we are going to see for our spiritual nourishment is we are going to concentrate on his word, which is called parable and on his work, which is called miracle. We shall take one parable, we shall take one miracle, and we shall see how that, and cumulatively, all the miracles and acts and teaching and preaching cumulatively lead the humanity to God, but lead him to the cross, to the passion. That we will see by the time we finish the talk. It's for our spiritual nourishment. Now, the attitude you and I could have is either you listen to me as you want to become, you want to become Alter Christus. You want to become another Christ in 2022. So see how I can imitate this Jesus now, as I am a priest, I am a brother, I am a sister, I am a person in the family. Or you can have the other attitude, you become the beneficiary. Jesus, you are, and here I am, I want to receive something from you. Whatever attitude you want to take, take. 
at times when I teach, I take up one attitude of becoming Alter Christus. When I have my personal prayer, I have another attitude. I want to be beneficiary of yours, O Lord. Okay, so now for the word that is parable, I'm going to take two small parables. And for that, I will go to Matthew's gospel because Matthew's gospel has presented Jesus as the new Moses. That is what some biblical scholars claim, and I tend to accept their claim because they show so nicely, so convincingly. So they say, see, Moses was attributed the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, namely Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And all of them are giving the instructions. That's why the name in Hebrew is Torah, instructions. So now Jesus is giving instructions in the Gospel of Matthew. First instruction in chapters 5 to 7, Sermon on the Mount. Second instruction in chapter 10, which is called Missionary Discourse. Third is in chapter 13, which is called Kingdom Discourse. Fourth in chapter 18, which is called Community Discourse. And fifth is in chapter 24. 25, which is eschatological discourse, and from 26 onward, Jesus is in the passion, death, finally resurrection. So, I go to Matthew's gospel because these five discourses, one, two, and three, reaches the climax, four, five, it comes back. And that climactic discourse of Matthew's gospel, all these researches are done by the other scholars. Huh? I have just picked up. Huh? Don't give any credit to me. Okay, so here, this in chapter 13 is the kingdom discourse. Now, Jesus is expressing his experience of Abba in a reality called Kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Now, kingdom, he picks up the term God also, but Matthew will use in, in place of God, heaven. If we want to just uh, put it, it's family of God. One family. Because in kingdom, there is only one king. And all the others are equal. So to in family, a one father. So what is that kingdom, that reality? He will explain, not by giving any theoretical dis, uh, definition, not any treaty. He just says short parables. So that parable is available if you want to open it's Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. I will read 31, that is one parable, and then I will go to 33, that is another parable. Just to let you know how the experience Abba is expressed. Jesus put before them another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. This is the first parable. Experience Abba expressed in parable, which will be depicting his life also. 
So let us see. On that Good Friday, one smallest of the seeds was buried. Smallest in the eyes of the Sanhedrin. Why? Blasphemer. Smallest. Smallest in the eyes of political power, Roman procurator. After declaring him three times innocent, yet crucifying him. The people, they were swayed in front of religious authority and in front of political authority. The common people have no alternative. They have to bow down. So on Good Friday, unanimously, that person, Jesus of Nazareth, was the smallest seed buried in the ground. Mother Mary was present. Joseph of Arimathea was present. Nicodemus of Jerusalem was present. John, one of the twelve, was present. Mary of Magdala was present. They were buried in the tomb which did not belong to him. And that mustard seed, my brothers, my sisters, my fathers, see it is grown. If my knowledge is correct, 37% of the world population today confess Jesus as their Lord which was smallest seed on that Good Friday, 33 AD. Now, this was Abba experience. Abba, you are my father and you are asking me to go ahead. I go ahead. I will become no one, I will be lost in the oblivion. No problem. No problem. A sure effect. Now, another one is very, very powerful. And that is in verse 33. Jesus said them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed it with three meshes of flour until all of it was leavened. So this is another. Silently, yeast transforms the flour. Silently. But surely, no noise, no voice, silently, silently. And that person is speaking silently into the hearts of many, 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 many today. Communicates, speaks, yeast. And be sure, effect is going to happen. If not today, tomorrow. If not tomorrow, day after. If not day after, next month. If not next month, next year. Patience. Patience. He has begun. We are simply continuing. We are simply continuing. So here we have seen so far. How this experience of father is being expressed in this kingdom reality. So we have picked up two characteristics. There can be many more. There can be many more. But 
two characteristics are I am now verbalizing characteristic one of the kingdom. There is no fanfare. There is no big inauguration. There is no music and dancing. It's a seed falling in the ground. Nobody notices. Nobody. Smallest seed falling in the ground. A person was buried. Good Friday. Buried. And there it started. It started. I like the film Jesus of Nazareth, very specially the scene when one character called Jera or Zera, I think Zera is the correct pronunciation, Zera goes into the tomb and he just sees and then he says this, it all begins now. So the characteristic of kingdom of God because of Abba experience, when everybody thinks, when I think that it is over, it is there, it starts, it begins. Abba experience changes. And those of us who have strong experience of the Father, yes, where I feel that it's over, it begins now. And see the paradoxically, our death is considered or is considered to be the end, but that is the beginning of the eternal life. Second characteristic I pick up from the second parable, and that is sure, steady, silent. It goes going. It keeps on going. Surely, steadily, silently. No one can stop this kingdom. No one. By a by experience. Those of us who will keep on having that experience that God is my father will never ever consider the other. Other, but brother, not other, sister. And as long as we keep considering the other, brother, sister, the kingdom of God will keep on going. Geographical boundaries, racial boundaries, ethnic boundaries, cultural boundaries, color, creed, no obstruction. No obstacles. Second. Okay, now I shift to the miracle. That is the work. I take one miracle which touches me the most. Again, I will be looking at the miracle from the perspective of Jesus who has a by experience. This is the miracle where Jesus according to Mark's arrangement of the pericope or episodes, in Mark's gospel chapter 5, Jesus has crossed over to the eastern side of the river Jordan, or let's put it, the Lake of Galilee. And that is not uh, the Israelites. They are the Gerasenites. And in Gerasenites territory, Jesus has exorcised one who came very first to greet him. Chapter 5, Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 1 to 20. And the one who was possessed, who remained naked, who remained in the tombs, who kept on hurting himself, who kept on howling day and night, that became a human abnormality brought back. No, normality is brought back. 
Jesus. What is the response of this Gerasenites? Get out. You get out. Jesus comes back. Not even enters the village. Comes back. Wonderful Jesus. Comes back. And there, according to Mark's arrangement, that Jairus comes. Come, 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 Jairus. Jairus says, come, come. My daughter is on the verge of death. Mark 21, 5, 21. Okay, my concentration will be Mark 5, 25 to 34. I will just tell you because it's a long text. I won't read. It's a woman with hemorrhages for 12 years. Our focus should be on Jesus because he has experienced the Abba. So our focus should be on that. So I will do some reader response criticism. I will supply what is not provided. What is the name of the village of Jairus? We do not know. But surely Jesus started walking with Jairus. So it is away from the Lake of Galilee. Lake of Galilee is still standing there. Which direction? We do not know. But surely it is in Israelite territory. It's not the Gerizinite. So it should be on the west of the Lake of Galilee. Sure. Now, as you and I are familiar, that now we have the chartered routes. And if we are driving, we have that GPS, ground positioning system in front of us, which keeps on directing us. But, you know, 2000 years ago, and very special in the village setup, to go from here to there, you could have more than one ways. You could go directly, you could go roundabout, you could go that side, you could anywhere, because there are no charted routes. We are concentrating on Jesus. So when Jairus came to call, in all my humility, I imagine Jesus takes that route, which goes via that woman's village. There could be other route or other routes, but Jesus opts for that route, which goes via this woman's village. Why? The society has laid imposition on her. No, you cannot mix with us because you are ritually impure. Leviticus 15. Leviticus 15 declares her ritually impure. And you are the source of impurity. You shall never ever mix with us. And this was for 12 years. We are looking from Jesus' point of view. Huh? Now, if you don't allow society, if you don't allow bringing all this legislation, which is worthwhile, the original aim is wonderful, so that the woman has a rest in that particular time. But now it is different. You have abused it and just made them outcast. So she is not a human being now. All right. Up by experience, you are not the other. You are my sister. You are not the other. You are my sister, but you cannot come to me. Because there are a lot of restrictions to you. And therefore, Mark will write, she has heard about Jesus, not she has heard Jesus. She has heard about Jesus. And therefore, she has never had the personal contact. But here is the man who has the Abba experience. You are not the other. There is no one who is other. You are either my brother or my sister. And therefore, I will change my route. Jairus, I'm taking this route. Sure. And there, I'm still doing reader response criticism. Maybe he is slowing down because a woman for 12 years hemorrhages, totally weak, totally weak. She's living a skeleton. 
no proper nutrition and there is a description if you read there and therefore you will have to come behind me and there she comes she touches and immediately she is healed we are concentrating on jesus we are concentrating on jesus so he came he allowed and she was healed did she pray no did she ask no non verbal prayer response immediate healing now jesus dramatizes because this is the lesson which could be given to everyone what is the kingdom of god and therefore jesus asks that question which sounds very silly to his 12 disciples who touched me and the 12 read this question senseless jesus senseless question you see so many and there jesus is answering right you are right you are right now jesus is not speaking to them he is saying you are right because all these touches are accidental touches but among all these touches there is one intentional touch that has made the difference one intentional touch who is that and she we are not concentrating on her she is thinking i made a blunder i should not have touched i just defiled him he has become impure now he couldn't proceed to on his agenda where he was going oh i'm so sorry but now he is not moving i must ask pardon so she comes and confesses it's i lord forgive me what forgiveness what forgiveness just he wanted to tell what is kingdom of god it's the faith that works marvels it's the faith that works marvels that works wonders today in this age of science technology electronics science is confessing oh i do not know how that person is healed oh we thought he would be gone but he is faith works and therefore as i am now concluding once again what we began with in uh, our biblical language it is called inclusio we began with mustard seed we come back to mustard seed luke 17 verse 6 luke 17 verse 6 jesus is challenging if you have faith the size of a mustard seed and if you challenge this mulberry tree to be uprooted it will and be planted in the sea it will kingdom of god kingdom of god and such confidence such faith such conviction only that person has who has experienced god as father god as father up by experience but doing all this would make him enemy of the vested interests and vested interests will make sure in their calculation that he is deleted they made sure they deleted him and that is the lenten season but that became a mustard seed and here is the kingdom of god my brothers my sisters in three sentences 
I summarize before I say the final prayer. Jesus experienced God as his father. During his 30 years of hidden life, that experience was expressed by the father at River Jordan at baptism. Sentence one is not over. That experience of Jesus is expressed in his public life, in the miracles, acts, teaching and preaching. Sentence one is over. Sentence two. This preaching, we took two parables which are explaining the expression kingdom of heaven. And we said the beginning is insignificant, somebody smallest buried, but it has grown into a huge tree now and people from nations of nations come and build the nest. Sentence is continuing. That kingdom is having slow, steady, silent effect over everyone. Sentence three, and that's final. That kingdom can be experienced with faith. Woman with hemorrhages. Because kingdom has come to her, she responds through faith. She experiences in her own life and there Jesus preaches teaches have faith of mustard seed size and you will also experience the kingdom of God let us pray Lord Jesus Christ you experienced your father as your father and when Jesus asked you to teach the prayer, you did not teach any other address, but you taught the address, Our Father. You made your Father our Father because you gave your Spirit, your Holy Spirit to us and made us your brothers and sisters so we can call you, we can call your father, our father, Abba, the same way you call him. Give us the grace in 2022, we have to become Alter Christus. We have to die like you so that a tree will be grown. We have to be steadily, silently, slowly keep on working the responsibilities that are given to us and fill us with faith, just faith in you and Jesus, we shall be like you. We make this prayer to the Father, through you, in the Spirit. Amen. I was asked to bless all of you, so we have the final blessing and then I hand over to Father Prashant. But before I bless Father Prashant, I sincerely thank you for giving me this opportunity. I sincerely thank, thank you, my brothers, my sisters, my fathers, whoever attending and listening to me. Thank you very much. Keep me in your prayers. The Lord be with you and also with you. May Almighty God bless you, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.